It's Premier League games that Mane's missed. Liverpool have taken 23 points from a possible 30. That said, his absence, how does it affect you? How does it affect the way that you would want to set up against Manchester United? Sorry, was it now positive or negative to last? No, it yeah, it's again, positive. Again. You've oh, taken positive. 23 points so we don't need the last to 10 games. Well, you could say that. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. cool. um, thank God. But um, obviously we still can play football without Sadio because we had already to do this a lot of times, much more often than we wanted. He's the highest quality player, we all know this. It was very unlucky with the yeah, with injury, it's very, it's, it's, it's like it is. I think a lot of players in this, in this international break from different teams got injuries. It's a big problem with the change of rhythm, different training, stuff like this. You, it's not only Sadio, it's, uh, it's Fellaini, a lot of players. Um, and so that's always a problem. Eh? You hope that nothing will happen. In this case, it's Sadio. Um, nobody else. So that's then maybe the good news. And yeah, we can play without him, even if you would love to have him in the lineup. That's how it is. So, on top of that, I suppose the question to ask is, with Firmino and Coutinho important to the way you set up as well, I'd imagine, this weekend, um, what impact has the international break had on, on their availability or in terms of the travel that they've done as well? Is, is yeah, now whether they've been able to return to training? Yes. Um, um, Interesting. Um, that's um, a little bit different because um, but the club is doing everything um, to, to bring the boys back. Um, uh, we work there really um, close together with other clubs in this region that we can bring all the South American players together home, and um, um, that's that's good. But Phil played two games. Roberto played around about five minutes or something like this, so it's different, of course, but they both had a long flight, even when it was um, pretty comfortable, I'm sure. It was not in the plane, but I can imagine, because I saw the price. <laughs> um, 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 so, no, oh, that should be okay. And they are important, yes. Well, last season, um, Jose Mourinho was effectively accused of parking the bus at Anfield. What approach are you expecting from Manchester United this time around? And do you view it as having a rivalry, yourself and Jose Mourinho? No, oh, I, I don't have personal ri rivalries <laughs> with other managers, so um, I don't see, understand the game like this. Um, it's a massive game. <laughs> it's, it's great, and I, I, I actually really would love to ask the Premier League for giving us more, both teams more time to prepare a game like this, because our fans are waiting for the game for since two weeks at least, if not since we played them last year, and um, we have exactly two days to prepare both teams. So that's how it is. But I think it's a it's a pretty big game. So maybe next time um, we'll have a look and, and bring these teams together when we really can can um, can work in the direction of this game. So, but that's only one thing. Um, but yes, um, Jose Mourinho teams play like they have to play in the different moments. In this moment, they are, of course, in a, in a much better um, situation than they have been last year when, when we played them. Um, and, but we, we cannot think too much about it. We know, we know how, how Manchester United is playing, uh, fantastic players involved in the, in the, in the team. And um, we know about uh, the qualities of Lukaku, Rashford, Mkhitaryan, Mata, all these guys have a few lineup problems maybe with, uh, with uh, second eight or six or whatever it is in, in the system. But very experienced and sometimes they defend pretty deep and sometimes they have uh, a high pressure formation. So um, that's how it is. And, Against us, they, they played very often, pretty early, long. Um, had always a target player last year, Bremovic, now it's Lukaku. We, have, we need to be ready for these fights, but they don't do that all the time. So there are also um, build up situations when they try to come between the lines, when they try to use Mikitarian with, with small passes and that he can use his speed, or Rashford can use his speed, or Lukaku can stretch the formation. You can imagine me, or Mata, with all the little. The little movements and then uh, making the big difference with the next pass. So um, you hear it already. Obviously, the opponent has big quality, so we know about that. Um, but we are still positive when we think about the game. I'm really looking forward to it. It's one of the most special games in world football. Well, I said a few times, if you if you are not involved, you would watch it 100%.
So it's clear if you have the opportunity to watch it, you watch it. And um, so we know this and we respect this and actually we want to perform and want to get a result. Over the last, I mean, you mentioned Lukaku there. Over the last few seasons, Liverpool have done really well against him. But obviously, this season, he seems to be scoring pretty much in every single match. Is it a different Romelu Lukaku that you're facing this season? But sure, of course, he's still a young player. So it was not. I don't think that there was any doubt at any point of his career that he will be a world-class striker. And he was already a, a world-class striker at um, at Everton. So um, and now being around these other fantastic players at Man United, of course, that helps him. And he helped the, the team so far a lot. It was not all, um, it was real um, um, go get the goals if you want. So it's like um, first try, no, second ball again there and, and do it again. It's, um, it was not always fantastic play or whatever. It's just like really fighting for these goals and he enjoys obviously life in this team a lot and um, have all the confidence you need as a striker and I'm sure he improved since he, since he joined Manchester. And I appreciate you, you still only get three points for winning the game but if Liverpool were to win this one what sort of mental or spiritual what boost would it give your if team? If, if we win. Uh, so actually that's the only thing I, I think about but I don't think about that, that we try with all we have to win but I don't think about what it will mean then so um, it's um, it, but it's a, it's a big 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 opportunity it's like it is it's, um, it's uh, we are even probably when you see it a little bit different uh, we are in a really good moment not result wise not scoring wise but performance is not as bad as probably a lot of people think. So we are not so weak that we don't have to think we don't have a chance against Man United. So yes, it's Anfield. It's our stadium. It's the first game with a Kenny Douglas stand. So we all we want to we want to use really all the power we can we can get and can create at this wonderful stadium. And um, I don't think that that it makes sense that we. Um, if you do like it's a completely normal game, it isn't. It isn't. It, and it should not never be. So that doesn't mean you can't get more than three points. But that not. But it means you know, only you. No excuses. Yeah, you have to try everything. That doesn't mean. I don't understand it like pressure. I really understand it like being an opportunity. It's a, it's a, it's a fantastic game. And how I see it, two really good football teams against each other. The weather should be good tomorrow. How I heard so. It's prepared. Um, Jürgen, is, it, is the fixture as intense as it used to be? There's been talk this week amongst fans and everybody else suggesting that it's lost its edge a little bit. What? Why? The, the, the game. No, I saw a few, I saw, I saw a few games in the past and I, 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 it's like when I watched the Classico, for example, Madrid-Barcelona a few years back and you always thought, what the... The referee really needs to close his eyes sometimes. You know, the challenges were that hard. It was always red card stuff like this. If anybody's waiting for this, I think it should not. It's not worth waiting. We, we um, how I understand, being aggressive means to hurt yourself and not the other one. So it means we will be. We need to be hard against ourselves. We need to be ready for each challenge. But if people are waiting for these historical things where the players could jump in each other and make bad tackles, bad... I saw them, a few of them. Um, and a few of the players involved are really nice guys, meanwhile. Um, and um, so that's how it is. But um, if you're waiting for these old times, it's not possible anymore to play like this in, in, in modern football, not even in England. So um, we have to respect the rules, and that's what we do. We have to win. We want to win because we want to win. We don't want to win because Manchester United should lose. So that's for me another big difference. That means being positive, aggressive. Yes, not negative. How would you assess your first two years at Anfield? You just celebrated your anniversary as Liverpool manager. What do you think? Actually, it was not a big party. Yeah. <laughs> but in terms of the progress of the team since you took over, do you think? Look, it's, actually, it's not my job to do this. It's, uh, it, I'm, I'm pretty sure you all wrote everything about it, what you thought about it, so it makes absolutely no... How we say in Germany that I give my mustard to it. Um, and um, it's just, it's just um, for me, a wonderful time. I enjoyed each second. It's fantastic. It's a difficult job, yes. It's, um, um, are, we where, are we where we could be? 
not sure. Did we last year really well? Yes. Did we good or better this year? Yes. But we didn't get the results so far. Does that mean I should stop? No. Um, but maybe, let me say, maybe that says a little bit, says a little bit about um, if we improved or not. Um, we had to improve to be in the, in the situation where we are now. If we wouldn't have improved, we would not be in the situation where we had been last year, last season, fourth position, or with these um, uh, not the biggest distance to the, to the top teams in the moment, even when it looks from the point, from the points a little bit different. If I would come in today as a new manager, and this would be the situation, if everybody would give us still then this kind of time and say, yes, now let's change it, now let's do the next step, that would be perfect. Unfortunately, if they sack me now, I don't think if there are a lot of, a lot of managers which would do the job better than I do, and I don't think I'm perfect, but it's quite difficult to find um, better options uh, on this. So I still think as long as 98% of all Liverpoolians think we are on the right way, we will succeed. That's how it is. It's, it's quite difficult. The good old times, not only Derby, from the Derby side, jumping in each other, getting red cards, bleeding players, they will not come back, but the good old times when one team um, dominated the league for, the, for 20 years will not come back either. So that's how it is. Our job is to, to, to work in this moment and to fight with all we have for each point. That's what we are doing, actually. Um, and so I'm not overly happy. That's why I said it was not a big party. Eh? When, when somebody called me, uh, congratulations, two years Liverpool, I didn't open immediately a bottle of champagne. It's, it's just because we, how I feel we're in the middle of everything. We, don't, we are not at the start, of course not, but there's still a long way to go. But I knew it before, so I'm not surprised about this. But of course, we, even if there's a long way to go, we could, have, we could have more points. We could have got more points last year, we could have more points already this year. But I'm calm and cool with um, all the things we have still to do. So I, I know we have to work, but I knew that from the beginning, so no problem for me. You worked with uh, Henrik Mkhitaryan before, obviously, now he's at Manchester United. He's been talking about how you managed to develop his career, not just in terms of the football, but he, he said sort of psychologically you were able to bring out the very best of him and inject self-belief. So how do you manage to do that with players? I think I call him and take it away then. Whatever I said, um, I don't know exactly what I thought, but uh, he's a fantastic player. He was always a fantastic player. We played him against him when he was a Chachter Donetsk. Poor, perfect, mental, uh, perfect attitude, but mentality. He, was, he, was, he wanted to do everything right in each moment, in each second of his life. Um, the perfect um, boy, son-in-law, whatever. Um, and sometimes in football you need a little bit to be a little bit different and, and you, you all know that a few of the most of the best players in the world have a few little issues we don't probably don't get aware of them but they have it so and it's it's, it's absolutely okay we're all human beings that's I'm, that it was not only Hendrik when I, um, with which I spoke about things like this, but it's, it's always I'm older than the players so I could and I made a lot of mistakes they don't have to make so I can tell them about that. That's how um, older people should handle younger people and still let them do their own mistakes. How I understand it, she's a fantastic boy, of course, and um, obviously he feels well at Manchester, but that's it. Yeah, and we've been reading about how you came close to um, being Manchester United manager back at your time at Dortmund. I mean, that must have been a, a huge decision to make for you. Can you, can you talk, us, talk, talk us through that decision? First of all, I don't know. But what I heard about the interview of former manager of, yeah. of my... That's the, the, the situation you, you, you speak about. What was he talking about? Sorry. That's only one thing, because I, I really like Eckhart Gautzo. But how it is, it still is with me already. Um, when I think too far in the past, I'm not one of them sure was right or wrong, but it's still funny if I mix it a little bit. 
I'm sure he thinks it was like this, but I was a player with Eckhart Kautzow, and how could I, as a very average player at Dortmund, at Mainz, say to my manager, by the way, if I become a manager, I would love to manage Manchester United. Maybe I, people think I'm a little bit crazy, but I'm not that crazy. I never thought about something like this, um, and so that's not. He was a big, he was a big, no, he was big, not for sure, not this time. So it was, he was a big admirer and is still, obviously, of Sir Alex Ferguson. In the first meeting when he came in, he was even wearing a jumper of Manchester United. That was quite, when he came in as a new coach, he had a jumper of Manchester United. So maybe he forgot, I know still. And, <laughs> and so that's um, a few funny stories. He didn't send me three times in 86 day in. It was exactly one time and the story around the actual manager of Mein Sandro, who is still a good friend of mine, he kicked me three times. You can ask Sandro Schwarz, he knows it still. My reaction was not too good on this, that's why we went in both. If he would have given us 5,000 euro or whatever um, as a fine, I would have played three months for nothing. So, unfortunately, a few things are not exactly, but still funny. I, I, had, I had fun when I read it, but um, <laughs> not all of it is... Um, Exactly like he said. <laughs> Sorry. Just going on the international break, we saw some stuff from Dejan Lovren talking about how the pain pillars he's having to take to play games. His training is restricted. How are we having to manage him? And is it a risk of playing we him? We had. We had. Yeah, that's true. We had back problems. They, they lead to, to, to groin problems. That's... If we could, would come out every day and tell where the players have pain, and where they, then, and, but they're still training, so you can't imagine um, how often that would, would be. It's not, uh, we, that's why we have a big um, uh, medical department. And they're always working with the players, and sometimes it, 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 it makes them available, and sometimes not. And um, yes, it was, it, it's true, we couldn't train. But now, um, that's why he didn't play the first game for Croatia. We told him and uh, and. Uh, Croatian FA that it uh, would really make sense and uh, let him out of the first game because he needed a few days rest. In this moment, it looks like that was enough, but we couldn't give him that rest in the, in the moment, in that moment, and um, so we managed it. But he was always match fit; um, otherwise, he wouldn't have played, of course. And um, so now he played the second game, 90 minutes. He's back. Everything looks fine. So that's it. Is that, is that no longer a, an ongoing problem? It's, it was no problem yesterday, no problem the day before yesterday. I don't know how it will be in a few days, but in the moment everything is good. There were quite a few guests from uh, other Steve Bryce holders in the uh, check Oh, you're going to, so I to ask with the international break, obviously you lost one of your key players, uh, what's that your mind? Salah, on the other hand, had a great time in Egypt, scored the two goals, got them through to the World Cup, and he comes back into the mix, and you've mentioned the little time that you have with the players now. What condition does he return with, and what are you expecting from him? Very proud. Mohamed Salah was talking about now, right? Yeah, very proud. Did anybody see the, the, the six-minute video about the, the summary of the game when you saw I never saw a celebration like this for 1-0 after 66 minutes. I thought it's a golden goal in the World Cup final. <laughs> <laughs> then 87 minutes, they made the equalizer. Boom. Obviously not a nice moment. And then 94 minutes, I never saw a celebration of a penalty like this and until anybody said, by the way, we still have to score. And um, I nearly had a heart attack when I thought I had to go down there and, 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 and take the situation that he... He did it, and um, I would say in this moment he's our number one penalty taker. <laughs> he, that pressure was unbelievable. He did really well, and um, after 27 years, I think fantastic news for Egypt. Um, and that's a really good generation what they have there. So, so they should go to the World Cup. But how it always is, you first you need to be qualified. So now they are there. Obviously, it's a good moment, but it's intense. In this moment, you see it's the same for for, for Sadio Mane. Best player of Senegal, with no doubt. So, how can the players? They don't have no chance to to to, to get away from the situation. Eh? So they have to be always there and spot on. In this moment, so Sadio had got an injury, and that could 
could mean he's not involved in in the game when when, when Senegal. I'm sure they can they can make the qualification without him. They need only one point, I think, from two games, so that should be possible. Um, but that's how it is. Eh? So. Um, England played a friendly game, and um, in this friendly game, on a, on a, on a artificial surface, it was a qualification game. But they were already qualified. I was not happy that Hendo was on the pitch. To be honest, with all the problems he had in the past, I thought it makes no sense. Um, and um, so we, 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 are, we cannot be involved in this. It's it's like they all make their own decisions. So, uh, no, no national, no manager of a national team asked me so far before a game how would you line up. Um, it would be quite difficult. Brazil plays pretty much always with the same lineup, so obviously they want to keep it going. Eh? So we watch it, we wait until they come back, and we take what we get. So sometimes they feel better. For Scott, for, for Robo, of course, not nice. For um, Ben Woodburn and Danny Ward, it's not nice. But um, it's like it is, and um, that's how why I said it. sometimes it would, I really would wish. I wish that we could have had more time until such an important game then to, to make the preparation. But no, it's our job, it's our challenge. Same for the other team. Let's go. Hey, Jürgen, you mentioned the Kenny Dalglish stand unveiling tomorrow. He was talking to the press yesterday and mentioned how often the fans have made a difference in his career, in his experience as a player and manager. Just wondered. If they can make a difference tomorrow, do you think? As well? <laughs> that would be nice. Um, he was here yesterday with his son, so it was nice to, uh, to have a little chat. Uh, what a wonderful um, guy he is! Big, big role model for pretty much everybody. So, um, meanwhile, I I understand him. So I'm long enough in England to understand his Scottish. So that's uh, that's um, that's good. Now we have real conversations. At the beginning, where I was only friendly, smiling. <laughs> But now it's, it's get, it gets more, becomes more and more interesting. So fantastic, fantastic person. Yes, he's right. But I think it made that were different times again. So it was uh, these these generation with him as a player and then him as a, as a manager. What a, what a generation that was. It's it's nice to have. It's nice to have them. But he knows that time changed. In the moment when everybody anybody else knows also, then it then it helps. But we all felt it already. Um, European nights at Anfield are still outstanding. All 12 o'clock games, 12.30 o'clock games at Anfield, could we improve? Yes. So it's Man United. Maybe we should switch the watch a little bit um, in the right direction and feel like it's 8 o'clock at night and go for it. So um, we know we have to deliver, but everybody who wants to help, very warm welcome. Yeah, we could need it. Guys, thank you very much. Welcome.